A quick free speech introduction to Plaid Cymru. Plaid Cymru, Welsh for Party of Wales, want Wales to be an independent state and have its own seat at the EU and the UN. Other important info, their logo used to be a dragon trapped in some mountains, but it's now a yellow Welsh poppy. They have three MPs and are the third largest party in the Welsh Assembly. Key moments for the party have included setting fire to an RAF base in 1936, going on hunger strikes to secure a Welsh language TV channel, and celebrating Welsh devolution. In 2012, Plaid elected its first female leader, Leanne Wood. She's been expelled from the Welsh Assembly Chamber for calling the Queen Mrs Windsor and also argued for Wales to have its own time zone. In a close election, Plaid Cymru could be kingmakers. But what would they ask in return? Can I start with an online question, Tina? Yeah, let's kick this one off with a question from James. Leanne, why can't you accept that the Welsh nation love being part of the UK? So what makes you confident that Welsh people actually want to be independent? I think, and I'll give you some stats. A survey uh, soon after the Scottish referendum showed that only 3% wanted full independence? Well, can I first of all respond by saying that that survey has been questioned, the way that the question uh, was asked, and that I would also say that there is a, is a majority of people uh, in Wales who favour more powers. And in Wales, we've got a third-rate devolution settlement. Um, we want parity with Scotland in terms of powers and finance. Ultimately, we want Wales to become an independent country, uh, but we recognise that uh, I'm a Democrat, that people are not there yet. But that doesn't mean that we can't get to the point where you got to here in Scotland last September, where you had a national conversation, not about dry constitutional issues, but about the kind of society that you want to live in. And I've got ambition for Wales that we can have a similar kind of conversation. Independence is normal and there's nothing inevitable about Wales' poverty that means that we are uh, to remain dependent forever. I believe that we can stand on our own two feet if we have an economic plan that gets people into work and we raise our own taxes just like any other independent country in the world. There's nothing stopping Wales taking its place in the family of nations uh, as part of, of a global world as a normal independent country. OK. Uh, gentlemen here. Uh, what should Plaid Cymru be doing to mimic the success the SNP's had in Scotland? In Wales. OK, well, I think, um, first of all, this is about having this national conversation and about people coming together and working out the kind of settlement that we want in order to be able to reach our full potential uh, as a country. Um, I think we can get there, uh, but we started off in a different place in Wales as compared to Scotland when we began on our devolution journey. There was already a devolved education system, a devolved criminal justice system in Scotland, and we started from scratch in Wales. So we're a little bit behind you, but we will catch up. OK. Uh, yeah, gentlemen from there. Hi there. Um, I can understand why Nicola Sturgeon may be unwilling to get into coalition or to help the Conservatives in any way, but you must understand there's a strong Conservative vote in Wales, and therefore perhaps it would be undemocratic of you to say under no circumstances could we support a Conservative government? Wales has never... <laughs> Wales has never, ever given a mandate to the Conservatives to rule. We've had a number of Conservative governments that have introduced many harmful policies to our communities. I come from the valleys in the south of Wales and uh, when Margaret Thatcher was running the UK, the... Yeah, quite... <laughs> You know, she, she closed the pits. There was a deliberate deindustrialisation that took place. And as a result of that, many people in Wales have uh, uh, deep, very strong feelings against the, the Conservatives. And that is why um, I, I'm very confident that Wales will not vote for a Conservative government uh, in May. And I think that most people in Wales want to end a Conservative government, and that's what I want to do. But they still poll ten times more than you. Uh, I don't think that's correct. Well, <laughs> if you're about 6% in the polls, OK, maybe five times more than you. But the fact is, you're maybe, not... Maybe 5%, maybe 10%. It... Well, no, the fact is, you're not a seat of big party I feel like work. you two are flirting a bit now. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, yeah, just about the back. Do you think we should possibly aim towards an English Parliament in our federal United Kingdom? Hmm. An English Parliament, yes, definitely. Um, I'm not quite sure about a federal United Kingdom because of the size of... Uh, it, the difference in size of the, 
the countries involved for proper federalism to work there would need to be equality between the nations so I'm keen to ensure equality and I'm not con convinced that federalism could deliver that Okay, got some comments online. Uh, yes, Red Owl 14 is a fan of your voice. If you were voting for who to voice an audiobook, Leanne Wood would have would, would so have my voice. Lovely accent. Um, Big if. But yeah, but let's get on to this one uh, from PJ, who says, "How on earth can Leanne Wood claim to be a Democrat while saying the people aren't there yet?" Well, I think most people um, uh, go on a journey in politics through their lives. People change their views um, all the time. And when good arguments are presented to people, most rational human beings will take on board those good arguments and run with them. OK. Uh, yes, gentlemen here. Um, I previously asked Nicola Sturgeon a question about animal rights, and I'm going to ask the same one to yourself. Oh. So, uh, but not not exactly the same. Not <laughs> oh, exactly the same. So, uh, Plaid Cymru has previously supported the Badger Call, which has been found to not actually be uh, working. So, is that still the case? Do you still support that, or have you moved away from that? We have moved uh, away from that because the the debate has moved on. There's no question that the problem of TB in cattle is something that needs to be addressed. But there are other ways of, of doing that. So, um, yes, we have moved on from, from that position. OK, I want to say a quick question from Karen Kelly. Where's Karen? Yes, what do you want to ask, Karen? Hi, um, how often do you deal with sexism in this job and how do you deal with it? I think sexism is something that women have to deal with almost on a daily basis regardless of the profession that you're in um, I try to to deal with it by um, Reminding myself why I came into politics and one of the reasons that I came into politics was to fight sexism and sexist attitudes and I think that um, Part of my daily work is involved in, in doing that. But I have to say, on a personal level, I haven't been on the receiving end of the same level of sexism as um, the Scottish First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, has, which I, I'd like to put on record. I think is absolutely appalling the way that she's been treated by the media. <laughs> uh, yeah, here. Um, so... I have two quick points. Uh, Natalie spoke about having a sustainable economy, but in England and Wales, education isn't free, like Scotland. So if you are elected, my first point is, what are the priorities that your party will give for um, education? And also, today it was claimed that there will be a rise in wages, but um, apprentices are still paid lower than the national minimum wage, and that is not a livable wage. So working with the National Union of Students and the student president at City of Glasgow College, what will you do to help and support apprentice wages, and would you raise them up? Well, we want to see a, a living wage introduced for, for everyone, and I don't accept that the way that apprenticeship apprentices and younger people in general are discriminated against in terms of wages. I don't think that's uh, acceptable. What was the first point of your question? Um, so uh, two my parts. first point to you was, what priorities would your party give to education as it's not free in England or Wales, but it is in Scotland? OK. Well, we've got a slightly different situation in Wales <coughs> to England. There's a, a tuition fee grant payable from the Welsh Government, which means that students pay £3,000 in Wales. If we had the same level of funding per head of the population in Wales as you get in Scotland, then we would be able to afford <coughs> free tuition fees in Wales as well. And that's one of the key issues for Plaid Cymru going into this election, is parity of funding. And that, if we had uh, parity of funding per head of the population in Wales, the same as Scotland in relation to England, that would mean an additional £1.2 billion into the Welsh Block Grant, which would enable us to do more than provide uh, free tuition. But we'd like to see um, our tuition fee policy geared more towards helping to support Welsh uh, universities as well, because at the moment, the tuition-free grant that is given to Welsh students means that they can study anywhere, and there's around £50 million that's uh, from the Welsh block grant that is spent outside of Wales and we want to try and ensure that students who are receiving this public money are able to spend it on Welsh universities. But just because I work in a college though, 
because you know, it's not every student and young person and anybody can go into university. It mm. is tough. Why just universities? Because colleges are like a stepping stone from school to university. So why are you putting money just into universities and not colleges, which are a part okay, from got it? The idea. No, you make a fair point. You make a fair point. I'm sorry I thought your question was specifically in relation to tuition fees and universities, but you're absolutely right. <coughs> I would like to see a aim for full employment where every young person who leaves school is either guaranteed a job or a training place or a university place. And I think if we had a, a situation like that, you wouldn't then see the, the shocking level of youth unemployment that I've got in my area, where 40% of young people are, are out of work. I think that's something that we should not accept. OK. Uh, yeah, Lady up there. Um, how do you plan to increase young voter um, turnout and registration when there's been massive cuts in youth services in Wales, including like the withdrawal of their youth parliament? So how do you plan on tackling that and getting more young people involved in politics? It's going to be a great challenge, given those cuts. I'd like to see the voting age lowered to 16, but I don't think that in itself would deliver increased turnout. There needs to be some sort of programme of um, providing political education to young people as well, so that when they vote, they've got a, an informed choice. But also, you need to make politics interesting. And I think that um, when you have uh, a Westminster system with four shades of Westminster grey sounding very similar to each other, then people can be left wondering what's the point of voting if they're all, all the same. So. Hopefully, now that uh, us three women are going to be involved in the leaders' debates, we'll be adding a little bit of interest. Uh, Tina, any online comments? Yes. Let's start with a seats question. How many seats do you expect to get in the general election? I'm not prepared to make a prediction. On no one that. is. <laughs> no one is. I have going to, to ask. Okay, yeah, let's go enough. to Oliver. Would you describe Plaid as a socialist party? We've, um, we're actually committed to, uh, to socialist aims as a party, so, um, yes. 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 That's a yes. OK, this one from Katie B. What a straight answer on this one. If you had to vote for either Labour or the Conservatives, who would you vote for? Oh, that's a terrible question. <laughs> well, it's a question. Good question. It's a good question. Yeah. Um, if, I would, if I wasn't allowed to set up my own party, I'd go Labour. Thank you for answering the question directly. Yeah. Very good. Uh, yeah, gentlemen here at the back. It has been widely acknowledged that the war on drugs has failed. What progressive policies do you want to fight for in the next parliament? Well, I'd like to see a reform of the, uh, the current drugs legislation. I think it's unfit for, for purpose. I used to work as a probation officer. And I've seen um, the problems that uh, substances can cause for people, although we have to acknowledge as well that they don't cause problems for everyone. I am very concerned about the fact that um, legal substances are more harmful than illegal substances. So the current system makes no sense at all. And when alcohol and tobacco are the biggest killers, and um, substances like uh, cannabis are illegal, then I think we've got our priorities very well. Okay. Uh, so a quick question from Rebecca Santos. Where's Rebecca? Oh, very good. In an increasingly dangerous world, with threats from ISIS and from a Russian leader who has no respect for national borders, is it not grossly irresponsible to give up our nuclear deterrent? I don't think the, the nuclear weapons will solve the problems that are thrown up by the, the conflicts that you describe. Um, <laughs> there, are, there are other ways uh, in which we can resolve those conflicts, and I would oh, always choose uh, seeking diplomatic solutions over military solutions every time. But that's not to say that you wouldn't have any defence. You'd want to have a defence system that actually meets the threats that you face. 
Uh, and I, I'm absolutely convinced that nuclear weapons uh, are not what we need. And the fact that it's going to cost £100 billion over the next 40 years, that is money that I would much rather see spent on hospitals and schools than on more weapons of mass destruction. Yes. Yes. Uh, in the middle. Um, is, it not, sorry, is it not true that um, Ukraine had nuclear weapons up until it was pushed by the international community in 1994 to get rid of it? Should they have kept the nuclear weapons, would they now be facing the threat that they've got to sovereignty from Russia? I don't think it would make any difference. I don't think, I don't think that makes any difference. There are, there are other issues at play here. OK. Uh, yeah, gentleman here. Um, let's speak hypothetically for a moment. Uh, in a world where either... Wales becomes independent or a coalition is formed similar to Syriza. Um, hi. Uh, do we really think that Europe is a safe place for a progressive left-wing government? Um, because Greece, Syriza is struggling somewhat um, and the European elite doesn't seem to be particularly fond of progressive left-wing politics. What would you do to deal with that? How would you tackle Europe? Okay. Well, I think the question that we're facing is um, there's a battle between austerity and the alternative to that. And from my perspective, we've got a, a welfare system that is being dismantled as we speak. This is a system that was fought very hard for by our grandmothers and grandfathers. And we shouldn't allow it to be taken away easily. And so if you oppose... Um, the austerity and more cuts and the dismantling of, of the welfare state, then you have to provide that alternative. And I see uh, a number of good opportunities from different parts of Europe where this voice is starting to assert itself. And I think that's a good thing. OK. Uh, yeah, lady in the hoops over here. Um, I was just wondering, this evening there's been a lot of talk about spending, spending, spending. But aren't we avoiding the huge problem that is the national debt, which is still increasing by about £3,000 per second? And from what's been said this evening, it suggests to me that it's going to be left to our generation right here to pick up the pieces of that debt. If you were to have more power, what would you plan on doing about the debt? I think it's worth thinking about this question about saddling future generations with debt because if you look at when the welfare state was built after the Second World War, the, um, there was no money, there was huge debt and yet the welfare state was built and then in the 1950s and 60s that was the time when people were told that they'd never had it so good. So investment in the welfare state in the 40s enabled wealth for future generations and I think that that's what will happen if we invest now. The converse of that of course is cuts, uh, the decimation of our welfare state and then you're looking at really saddling future generations with oh, problems. Obviously it's the anti-austerity be... position which could avoid that. Good to talk about the, uh, the debt more but that is all we've got time for unfortunately. One more quick thing, even if you're not sure about voting on May the 7th, give yourself the option by registering to vote. Go to gov.uk forward slash register vote. Do it now, yes, now, now. Yes, do it now. Next week we've got the Conservative Party in the hot seat, so do get on Facebook and send us your questions or use the hashtag AskAtory. Uh, until next Tuesday, live at 8. Good night. <laughs>